I found some more junk in my attic. Um, this is a three phase electric switch with uh, mercury switches in glass tubes. You see one switch for each face. <coughs> I think this switch here was used for the motor that drives the church bells. It came from that direction. I don't know exactly where it was used, but I imagine that it could be that. And they used probably this uh, mercury switch because uh, the motor has to uh, uh, put on and off every day for, uh, for a long time and uh, all the, the inductive load would simply destroy any other kind of switch and well, let's have a look inside and see what we can do with it. Uh, first part is there is a cover missing, but the most interesting part about this missing cover is the screw. That's not only a screw, it's a screw with a hole. And you hear the church bell right now. That hole can be used for a lock, so nobody can open that switch except the trained and licensed electrical engineer. We have one panel here for two small wires and we have another panel here for a couple of thick wires, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would say it's three input and three output wires. Uh, the amazing thing here is it's not only a relay, it has gears, it has a coil reading 220 or 380 volts. 380 volts is the voltage you have when you're playing with three-phase motors and stuff like that. 220 is the normal household current voltage. Current voltage, okay, that's technically totally incorrect, I know, but that's how people speak. Okay, let's take it out of that. There are two screws here. They're not magnetic. Maybe stainless steel. Maybe brass. That was quite often used in these old uh, devices. Okay, no more screws. The good thing is everything comes out because here we only have insulating uh, material. It's Bakelite or something like that. That's only an insulator for uh, the cable through put here. Let's see the other side. Wonderful, as I thought. One, two, three inputs, switch, one, two, three outputs. Then we have the terminals for the thin wires here that go up. To that terminal block here and then to the coil. So that must be input for the coil. There is another beautiful detail here. That's how you switch from 220 volt 
to 380. You simply loosen these screws here and then you flip that part over and attach it again. Okay, let's see which position is which. How many ohms do we have? We have now here, between the two terminals here, 2.7k, 2700 ohms. Okay, and when I flip that selector here, by the way, the noise you hear, it's uh, snowing or raining like hell. It almost sounds like hail. Yeah, it's the 19th of um, April and we have April weather. Sunny, snow, hot, cold, everything. Okay, the other position is 5.4k. <coughs> So that must be the 380 volt position because it has the higher uh, resistance. So let's go back to 220 because that's what I have here as supply voltage. By the way, that's the weather right now. As I said, April 19th. And it's snowing like stupid. Look at this. The roof is all over already white and it's only a couple of minutes. Ten minutes ago there was nice weather. Sun was shining. Not really warm but quite pleasant. And now this. Well, that's April weather as it is in a textbook. For my AC experiments I have here my AC power source, an old Variac. Uh, for those who do not know what Variac means, it means variable AC, very -ac. And it does exactly like this. It's uh, some sort of uh, transformer with a adjustable uh, contact here and then I switch it on I can adjust it to 220 volts here are the amps we don't need many of them well let's see what our switch is doing one two three it does nothing okay I think because this thing has been lying around for a long time that mechanism may possibly be stuck a little bit. Let's see. I can turn that. It turns but yeah it's sticky. So I think we need a drop of oil or two to make that move again. Okay. Oops. Gravity always active. Okay. One drop here. And where is the other side? Here. Well, you may ask why did 
they take a motor and not a, a solenoid like in a normal relay so I think a solenoid would be too quick and the glass tubes here could break if they are shaken around too quickly okay let's try that again it seems it runs a little bit easier now one two three no yes yeah it moves but hardly you probably can see the wheel up here is moving okay uh, yeah now uh, that thing is moving let's do it again yeah it moves down and it should move up by itself because there's a spring here that brings it back to the position but I think everything needs a little bit of uh, oil right now okay I'll do that and I'll come back to you well it seems a little bit of oil has helped three two one on that's the on position and when power goes off the mechanism is brought back to its original position by the spring we can see here a, a, a number of 10 written on the glass this is probably made for 10 amps that could be so let's see how this switch works with a little bit of load I hooked up one contact with a with my uh, <coughs> ohmmeter with a, in a, in the four wire mode to eliminate all the wire resistance. Now let's see what it means, what it tells us on. Oh, that's pretty well. That's 10 milliohms, 17 milliohms. I know it's about 5 milliohms I have with all my wirings. Um, that's not bad for a, I don't know, 50 or 100 year old switch. The other way, overload, okay. Does insulate properly again 17 18 milliohms and again totally repeatable that's the new test setup the black wire comes from the mains outlet the gray wire goes to my vacuum cleaner it has about 2000 watts so probably we can see a spark and probably not one two three it runs smooth I mean that's the purpose of this uh, mercury switch that it does not produce a big spark I changed the setup a bit I let all the current flow now through the first uh, mercury switch here that one in the front
Yeah, I think we can see the spark, although it's exactly there where the, where the bracket is, but I can change that. I don't want to take that apart now, but I think you get the idea how it works. Do you remember the snowstorm 10 minutes ago? Well, that's April weather. Blue sky, a couple of clouds, dry, everything okay. And in 10 minutes we have, I don't know what exactly, but certainly something totally different. Thanks for watching.